I'm in a city famous for many things. The Beatles, the famous football clubs, the Grand National and, of course, the Mersey. But as a British Muslim, I think Liverpool should also be famous for one more thing, for the pivotal role it played in bringing Islam to this country. The strange thing is, it's a story I know almost nothing about. I'm told that behind this door is the country's first mosque. I wasn't sure what to expect, but it certainly wasn't this. I'm meeting Jahangir Khan and Ron Jeeves to uncover this extraordinary mystery. So, wh where's the mosque? You stand, you stand, you stand. Really? Yeah. This, this is, is where people would have prayed. That's right. You would have had about 200 Muslims praying in this mosque. Goodness me. It's in uh, the 1890s. You would have had an extraordinary gathering. You would have had British gentry, um, male and female, people from Liverpool's working classes. I found common names like Jones yeah. and Warren and Smith and Who'd all Charlton and all converted. So this mosque wasn't for immigrants. It was for hundreds of white converts. The person who managed to turn devout Christians into the first generation of British Muslims must have been extremely charismatic. Who was he? Abdullah Quilliam was born William Henry Quilliam mm -hmm. from a very well-known Methodist family here who converted to Islam and surprised a lot of people when he did it. A sickly young man, William went to Morocco to recover. What his family didn't expect was that he would come home a Muslim and with a passion to convert the people of Liverpool to Islam. When Quilliam was its leader, this is what the mosque would have looked like. God bless the Muslim cause, bless all who keep thy laws and do the right. One idea to convert Christians was to sing traditional anthems in an Islamic style. Not everyone was happy to see a mosque on an ordinary street in Liverpool, and they made their resentment known. There was quite a lot of initial criticism, that's mm. for sure. The mosque is attacked, people throwing pig's heads, people leaving razor wire in the courtyard there. But of course, he was a very brave man, you can imagine. He claimed he was the first Muslim of Britain. That's an amazing story, isn't it? Quilliam was rewarded by Muslim leaders with the title Sheikh al Islam. He and his mosque became famous across the Islamic world. So I can't understand why Quilliam and his achievements have been forgotten. I think. If we were talking about the first church or the first synagogue or the first ever Hindu temple in this country, you wouldn't find it in this kind of ruin. Very sad. Quilliam left Britain and the mosque in 1908. Without his charismatic leadership, his congregation dwindled and the mosque was later sold on to the council. There are now ambitious plans to restore this unique building back to Quilliam's original vision. It's remarkable the role that this mosque has had in the social history of this country, and I think it's a really important and uplifting story to tell for this country, and I hope that they raise the funds to bring this mosque back to life again.